Hey everybody, Tina here with our Blessed and Beautiful Life. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am popping on really quick to show you guys something. I'm about to head out and go help Joe with the garden. Um, we've got some cucumbers to transplant and hopefully some carrots to put in today, so we'll see. But um, I had a couple of requests to go over some of the curriculum, the way I've organized it for next year's homeschool. And as some of you may know from previous videos, um, we've decided to um, switch next year. So we're going from using a Becca homeschool curriculum to the good and the beautiful. And I'm really excited about it. Um, a little nervous only because, you know, I've been homeschooling Parker for two years now and we started with Abeka and that's what we've used. So Abeka is an amazing um, uh, Christian based curriculum and we've thoroughly enjoyed it. So one of the main reasons why I have decided to switch over is because with the good and the beautiful, um, all of the research that I've done, the reading and watching some other mom's YouTube videos and things that do use the good and the beautiful, it seems like that curriculum really minimizes a lot of like the prep work. Um, with a Becca, I'm having to, you know, get up in the morning before we even do school or do it the night before, but I have to prep for our lessons the next day. I've got to get all the, the charts out and the flashcards, and then they've got a whole list of um, visuals or materials and things like that. So it just, it's kind of like, it, it's not like it's a lot, but if I had something where I didn't have that much prep work, um, that would be amazing for me because I'm super busy. So anyway, we're gonna give the good and the beautiful a go and we're gonna see how, how it ends up. And that's what we're gonna do for third grade for everything, math, language, arts, history, science. But today I'm gonna talk specifically about the science unit that we chose for third grade for next year. So um, the good and the beautiful is beautiful. <laughs> That's one of the things I really like about it. So um, everything, all of their curriculum, language arts, all of it, it has beautiful pictures, just vibrant colors. Um, Parker was just looking through all the curriculum when it came in the mail and he was like, oh mom, look at that, look at this. And he was just staring at these portraits and things that they have in there. And um, you know, at such a young age, they're just drawn into that. And I know I'm kind of rabbit trailing a little bit. One thing I did notice, I was reading through the language arts and for the good and the beautiful and um they give him like a portrait to look at and then when he writes his journal um it's about that portrait like they'll ask him a question about that portrait or something and then he writes his journal about that so he has like a visual where he can look at this picture um and write his journal entry about this beautiful photo you know one was like these siblings walking their cows through the pasture or something but it was just so pretty and there was so much to look at in the in the picture um, right now with a Becca, when we do journal writing, um, or even like his little stories, it's just me telling him what he's going to write about. You know, for example, he did one the other day and he had to write a story about, um, a pair of shoes that came to life. Well, I don't know about you guys. For me as a girl, I can write 25 pages about a pair of shoes that came to life. They're going to have names. I'm going to tell you what they look like and everything else. But you try to get a little seven-year-old boy um, to write, you know, a descriptive story. And it's like, he can't even hardly get through the title. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what else to write. So what I have started doing for him is I will look up pictures on the internet um, one of his other stories with his Abeka writing the other day was about an astronaut. An astronaut. He was supposed to write a story about if he, something like if he was an astronaut in space or whatever. Um, and I looked up a picture of an astronaut floating in space with the earth kind of in the background and everything. And it gave him that visual to look at that really kind of stimulated his mind and helped him come up with like some descriptive words and some complete sentences. And I think for him, and I don't know if it's just a boy thing, but for Parker, I know that it it really helps him and it also gets him really excited about writing. Like if you just give him a blank piece of paper, he's just kind of like, really? <laughs> I'm gonna be here for three hours. So that is the other thing I'm really, I really like about The Good and the Beautiful um, just from looking at the curriculum because we ordered it and I got it in the mail and going through all of it was so exciting. Um, visually, it just draws him in a lot and I'm excited about that. So the science units, um, and if I'm not mistaken, they're they're developed to, uh, you know, last through the whole school year. So this 
they have different ones you can choose from. Um, they have space units, uh, energy, mammal units, you know, where you go through all the different animals. Well, Parker decided to go with marine biology for third grade. And you guys, he loves ocean animals. And so it's just like right up his alley. But what I did, because these units can be used over and over again. So, you know, we may do this unit this year. And the, what I'm trying to say is we can use this same curriculum again. So like, let's say we do mammals next year um, and we do something the year after that. Well, then the following year we can come back to marine biology and we can do this unit again because it's kind of like reading the Bible, right? You, you read it once, you get all the stuff out of it, and then you go back and read it again and you get new stuff out of it, stuff that you didn't get the first time. So you can do this over and over again. And because of that, um, I really wanted to organize this in a way that would keep it in good condition and be, you know, so we can use it for years to come. Um, I am a little, I always say I'm OCD, but I, I really just think I'm like very organized and I'm very detail oriented and meticulous about things is just how I am. So I hole punch everything, I laminate everything, not saying you have to do this, not judging if you don't, this is just the way I do it. So marine biology, what I did was I got myself a nice binder and I went through and I hole punched everything. So there are 13 lessons, 13 lessons in the marine biology unit. And what I did is they've got vocabulary words that, um, are for the entire unit. So as you go through the lessons, the kids learn different vocabulary words as it pertains to the lessons that we're working on. So what I did is I just cut them all out and I laminated them so they can be used over and over again, if you can see that. So I laminated them, cut them out, and then I put them in this document protector for now. And then I went and got a trifold um, poster board. So it's going to be our science unit vocab board. So whatever we're doing science, I'm going to pull that trifold out, have it sitting up. And then each lesson, you kind of post up these different vocab words for the kids. So that's what we're doing there. Um, let's see. So for all 13 lessons, I, like I said, I laminated all of the like pictures and things like that. But for example, Lesson one, I'll just show you guys lesson one. So here, this is what it looks like. Lesson one, ocean characteristics. I'm super excited. I love ocean animals too. So I'm like giddy about this. But what I think is cool, and this is just, again, my personality. I'm a list person and I like to check things off. The good and the beautiful, they have check marks um, all along your curriculum. So when you get done doing something, you can check it. Us mamas with our mama brains, it's really fun and nice to be able to check things off, right? So um, it's got everything lined out here for lesson one. So this is like lesson one that I'll be doing with Parker. And it's different things. You know, we're, we're talking about things. I'm doing some reading to him. Um, and then we're going to do some worksheets. So we're going to learn about ocean currents. So I've laminated that. And then he's gonna learn about oceans of the world. And I laminated this because he can fill this out with a Sharpie, um, not a Sharpie, with a dry erase marker. And then I can just erase it and we can use this later on. Um, and then it comes of course with your teacher keys in case you don't know this stuff because there's a lot of stuff that I don't know. Um, it comes with the teacher keys. So this is obviously for this. And then this is just an example of, and you guys forgive me, I'm doing this recording on my phone. Um, so if, you know, I'm not going to be editing out anything if I mess up my words. Um, sometimes I get lazy and I just don't want to. So it is what it is. Take me as I am. But this is an example of one of those beautiful photos that I was telling you guys about. Isn't this amazing? So as we're going through this lesson, um, I can't remember, but I think there's a part that has him, you know, look at this photo, observe the photo, and then just talk about how the photo makes him feel. Um, and we were putting this curriculum together the other night and I asked him, I was like, Parker, what does that make you feel like? Like when you look at this beautiful picture, looking over the ocean on the cliff and he's like, mom, he's like, I can see myself sitting up there, hugging my knees. And he's like, and I can smell the salty water. I, that is what 
I love and that is what I want I want to bring out his creative side and I want him to bring out his imagination and really you know go to a fun place in his brain because there is just so much going on in the world today and learning you guys should be exciting and he should want to learn um, you know I know you guys have all seen the CDC's guidelines that have just recommendations that have just come out for when public schools open back up from this coronavirus and it's heartbreaking to me because as if the public school environment um, already had some you know cons in my opinion um, these guidelines it's like these kids are going to be in prison it's not even like a school environment anymore and it's like way too you know um foster that love for learning and that excitement i mean they're talking about kids wearing masks any kids that are over two years old lines are going to be marked with tape the kids can't eat in a cafeteria together they can't play on the playground um all this stuff and it's like oh my goodness i'm at because especially because of what's going on I'm so happy that we're homeschooling Parker. Um, and I am seeing a lot of other parents that are like, you know, we're already kind of doing this homeschool thing anyway. It's been thrown in our lap um, with the school shutting down. So we're just gonna continue. Maybe we can do this. And my heart just flutters every time I see posts on Facebook of moms going, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just homeschool my kids next year too. And it's like, you guys, you can do it. That's, that's, if anything, you know, good always comes out of bad, I believe, some somehow, somewhere, even if we don't see it at first. And I think a lot of parents are realizing that, you know, you can school your kids at home. You can educate them at home. Um, and we don't have to replicate what the, the public school environment looks like. You know, your kids don't have to sit at desks and you don't have to ring a bell when it's recess. Like, you know, that's why we're homeschooling. So we can do it the way we want to. Um, but I was excited just to see Parker immediately look at this picture and go to his senses and was like, I smell the salty water. Like, that's what we want. We want our kids to love learning. So this is just an example of one of the beautiful photos that they have. And then what I've gone ahead and done, we have some science experiments for lesson one. Um, so we have a salt water experiment for lesson one. And what I did was just, again, I cut everything out, got it ready for the lessons. So when it's time for us to get going on this, um, I don't have to like worry about any prep work. So there's a little bit of upfront prep work, but there's not like this daily prep work um, that I'm kind of experiencing with Abeka. But he's got these cute little, and I forget what they even are. Um, sorry, I'm doing this on the fly, you guys, forgive me. But they've got these cute little, let's see, so that was a photograph observation, ocean characteristics. And then um, we have a mini book in this lesson. I'll show you guys that. And then he's got these cute little, at some point in this lesson, we talk about um, different ocean animals. So we've got these really colorful cards. Look at that. Of the sea creatures. There's a shark. Parker thought that was amazing. And again, I laminated all these so that they'll stay in good condition and we can use them again. Um, you know, you guys all know that ugly light fish on Nemo. Yeah. Parker was like, oh my gosh, that's the fish from Nemo. And then, of course, we've got some sea turtles, which are my favorite. Um, but just some really cute cards that are fun for him. And then in a lot of the lessons, um, they've got mini books, which are cool. So you just cut these out. Literally, you just cut the pages in half. You can just staple them together and you've got your mini book. I'm just a little over the top and I, I laminated everything. And then after I laminated it, I was like, oh crap, I can't staple this because it's too thick for a stapler. So I'm like, oh, well, I'll just hole punch it and tie it together with yarn. <laughs> so I didn't do that on purpose. I didn't do it because I'm awesome and I didn't do it to make it cute. I did it because it was the only way I could figure out how to put it together after I had laminated all of these sheets. But just this little mini book of ocean, um, oh gosh, I don't even know how to say that pelagic pelagic zones whatever we'll figure it out when that day comes but it's got you know some information about the different zones in here and again everything just has beautiful pictures so it's got the different zones there so it's pretty neat um so you just go through and you put together all of these little mini books for the kids and then that's lesson one um so that's what I did. And I also put, I have a list of 
supplies that I do need to get like for the science experiments and stuff. So I went through all the lessons the day I got them. A lot of the supplies I already have, you know, you guys, if you have an art bag or uh, some of the stuff you can get in your own kitchen, right? Um, food coloring and things like that. But whatever I didn't have, I wrote a list down of what I still need to get to be able to do all his lessons next year for the science experiments. And then I'm just going to go pick that stuff up at some point. But um, that's pretty much it. So I've laminated everything and hole punched everything. So the science units are there and ready when we're sitting down to do science. And I'm really excited. I think it's going to be great. It's a little nerve wracking switching curriculums. Um, I guess there's a lot of more experienced people out there that have done it maybe a few times. But like I said, I haven't. So I I'm curious as to whether there's going to be a little bit of a gap there going from one curriculum to another. Um, obviously they, they teach things a little bit differently, but I think we can get through it. You know, Parker's a smart kid. Um, I think I'm a smart mom, so we'll get through it, but I'm excited. There is, there is no prep work other than like the initial prep work. And this is for the science unit for the language arts and stuff. There, there really isn't prep work. I mean, you're working out of the same book as your child. You know, with a Becca, I have, I'm doing parent-led. I don't do the videos. So I'm actually teaching him like a, like a teacher, you know, just me and him. He's not watching videos online. So I have my parent curriculum book and then he's got his worksheet books and then we've got test key books and then we've got all these different books and stuff. So what I like about The Good and the Beautiful, his language arts and stuff like that, it's one book and we're working out of that same book together. So there's literally no prep work and it's got little check marks. It's like, read this. And so we have this little reading section. When you're done, you check it off, move on to the next one. So simple. So we'll see. And I'll keep you guys posted on, on all of that, of course, and, uh, let you know how it's going. If we end up enjoying it or if we end up hating it, I'm sure we'll love it, but I hope you guys are well. I just wanted to pop on and show you how I decided to organize our science curriculum for next year for the good and the beautiful. All right, ta-ta for now.